At the beginning of the animation, we are shown a tribe of minions, a species of creatures that have been existing far long before human beings. These little creatures have a common goal, which is to find the avilist creature that exists and serve them. The problem with these minions was that they struggled to keep a particular master, as their failures always resulted in the death of their masters across ages and evolution. From dinosaurs to the early man, to civilization's most historic moments and ages, the minions continued searching for new despicable masters as they were incapable of having one for long. But one particular master took their mistakes badly and chased them out of his territory. They had nowhere to go and hopelessly walked across the polar regions until one day when they found sanctuary. They were happy to finally have a place to themselves and form their civilization as the years went by. But living independently was not part of their characteristics, so, without a master, they began feeling empty and aimless. And if they spend more time living like this, the minions would all fall into depression and perish. One faithful day, a particular minion named Kevin brought good news to his mates. He had spent several days thinking about this plan and felt very enthusiastic to share it with the tribe. Kevin calls them to order and explains that he intends to go out of their sanctuary and back into the outside world to find the Evilist master for them. He mentions that he would not return until he finds the biggest villain whom they would live under his or her control, but he needs the assistance of some of the minions who would volunteer to join him on the adventure. Most of the minions do not have the courage or will to embark on this journey, so Kevin ends up with just two unskilled volunteers for the adventure. Bob and Stuart, who are the volunteers, join Kevin the next morning, and they embark on their journey to find themselves a boss. They journey across the polar region, and also across the forest and seas until they finally arrive at New York. The minions get into the busy city and are awed by everything they see around them. Bob, the youngest of them, mistakenly falls into a car's trunk and later finds himself inside a mall. The other two minions look around for him and when they finally find him, the mall has already been closed. So, they lay on a bed, turning on the television when they come across the Villain Network channel where an announcement is made about the biggest villain gathering in the world. This event will have the attendance of esteemed villains and also a genius criminal named Scarlet. The venue for the International Villain Convention is in Orlando, Florida, so, the minions head out in the morning to the venue to go find their new boss. Kevin, Stuart, and Bob soon arrive at an empty road where they look for a vehicle that would take them to Orlando. Kevin raises a board on which he inscribed their destination so that the buses moving in that direction would stop for them. After a while, an old car, containing a family of five, stops at their sign and gives them a lift. This is the Nelson family, notorious robbers who are also headed to Orlando for the villain convention. Along the way, the family pulls on their masks and get out of the car to rob a bank, after which they return with their loot and drive off with the police chasing after them. With assistance from Stuart and Kevin, they outrun the police and continue on their journey. The travelers finally arrive at Orlando and Mr. Nelson drives towards an abandoned fish store where their car is taken away after he had said the secret code. They are taken to the venue of the convention and the Nelson family say their goodbyes to the minions as they split. At the venue, a lot of villains gathered at different times, and after a while, the guests all head into a hall to see the world's top supervillain, Scarlet Overkill. She makes a grand entrance on the stage amid screams and ovations from the audience in the hall. The minions sit together and are awed by Scarlet's entrance and appearance as they imagine working for her. During her speech, she mentions that she is looking for henchmen who would work for her on her new project. This news is received by the villains with a great reaction because everyone dreams to work with Scarlet due to how iconic she is. The criteria to be selected to be among her team is to successfully take the red ruby away from her hand. Immediately, the interested villains go forward to gain possession of the precious stone but are unsuccessful. The minions also join in the stampede and luckily turn out to be the winners as they successfully took the ruby out of Scarlet's hand. The audience cheers them, and they later accompany Scarlet to her jet, which she drives with England as their destination. Along the way, Kevin places a call to the other minions in the cave, informing them that they should head to England as he has finally found a master. The minions are already being attacked by some wild animals at the cave, so they all head out to commence their journey to Scarlet's place. Bob, Kevin, and Stuart finally arrive at Scarlet's mansion where they are received by her husband, Herb, who is a scientist. Scarlet and Herb then take the minions to a room filled with loot and also a portrait of the Queen of England. 
Here, Scarlet mentions to the minions their first mission which is to steal the royal crown and bring it back to her. Later in the day, they are handed their gadgets for the mission and taken to bed, where Scarlet tells them a scary bedtime story before she bids them goodnight. The next day, Kevin, Bob, and Stuart head out to the Tower of London to carry out their mission. They go to obtain tickets to gain entry, but they are ignored, so they dress and disguise themselves as a young lady and are given tickets. Inside the tower, they use the map's direction to go into a restricted area that leads to the crown. They take off their disguises and bring out their gadgets, but they are halted by guards who point their weapons at them and try to send them out of the restricted area. Stuart then steps forward with his hypnosis device and uses it on the guards, who immediately become hypnotized. They start singing, dancing, and even getting undressed. So, the minions go ahead with the mission, leaving the men dancing as they climb the high tower. They finally get to the door to the room where the queen's crown is kept, and Kevin creates an entrance for them using the lava gun which Herb gave to him. The minions enter the room but are stopped by an old man who is the protector of the crown. He has protected the crown from intruders for many years and fights off the minions, so they would not have the royal relic in their possession. During the fight, the lava gun blasts due to pressure, and the tube in which the crown is placed begins going down through a hole. Seeing this, the minions jump into the hole and stand on top of the tube, which passes through several gears as it continues to go down. It finally stops, and the royal guards take the crown from the tube and march away, while Kevin, Stuart, and Bob look on helplessly. The crown is soon worn by the queen as she is carried across the streets in her royal chariot. Stuart and Kevin both run after the chariot, while Bob activates his gadget and picks up the other two, throwing them toward the chariot. He is held down by some officers who call for backup as the queen's safety has been compromised. Kevin and Stuart land on the chariot, throwing the charioteer across the floor while Stuart goes in to meet the queen. They both tussle for the crown while Kevin rides the chariot as he tries to outrun the police vehicles who are after them. Bob later resurfaces from a tunnel as he stops the chariot from driving into a river, but it later smashes into a tree. The queen then orders the officers to go after the minions and Stuart and Kevin are caught, while Bob runs into the sword in the stone and pulls the sword free to defend himself and his friends. This act which Bob carries out is a myth in the history of England and therefore implies that the queen would be removed and Bob crown the new king. At Scarlet's residence, she sees the news of Bob's coronation and gets enraged that he accomplished her dream of stealing the throne, so she sets out for the palace. Meanwhile, the rest of the Minion tribe are still on their journey to England as they pass the sea, desert, and across several continents. The day of the coronation arrives and Bob is ushered in amid the cheers of the people as he goes to make his first speech as king. Afterward, Bob, Kevin, and Stuart are shown around the palace where they become excited and begin playing about. In the evening, Scarlet and her husband arrive at the palace, and she confronts Bob for taking her dream away from her, but he voluntarily gives her the crown and abdicates the throne in her favor. Bob changes the law and makes the way for Scarlet to be crowned Queen of England. With their mission now complete, Kevin shows Scarlet pictures of the other minions, telling her to accept them as well. She takes them inside the palace and takes them to a dungeon, where she leaves them with her husband to torture them. The minions stay with Herb for a while, but he later leaves, and they begin finding their way to escape. Back at the palace, Scarlet is dressing up, preparing for the coronation ceremony. At the dungeon, Kevin, Stuart, and Bob finally see an escape route, so they run through the tunnel to go apologize to Scarlet. Meanwhile, Scarlet has already moved through the streets filled with villains who cheer her as she makes her way to Westminster Abbey, where she would be crowned. Kevin, Stuart, and Bob head to the venue and interrupt the coronation by accidentally dropping a chandelier on Scarlet. Mistaking the accident for an assassination attempt, Scarlet angrily orders the trio's execution, and has other villains chase them through the streets of London during a thunderstorm. The minions run for their lives and try their best to fight back but Stuart and Bob are captured. With all this happening, the remaining tribe of minions finally arrive in London on a train and collectively head to the palace. Kevin goes to a pub to hide. Here, he sees the former queen who still bears grudges against him. On the television, Kevin watches as Scarlet interrupts a news reporter and declares that she will kill Stuart and Bob if Kevin does not show up by dawn. With the villains still searching for him, Kevin sneaks into Scarlet's castle to steal weapons. The villains then find out that he is in there, so they arrive at the door and begin banging on it. Kevin is scared and mistakenly triggers a machine Herb was building. 
The villains break down the door and run inside the room to see that Kevin has started growing as a result of the vibrations coming from the machine. The building in which he stays collapses as he increases in size and Kevin finally turns into a giant. Across the street, Scarlett and her husband bundle Stuart and Bob, placing them in the middle of several explosives. She ignites the wick and goes away to hear the explosion but Kevin appears and rescues his friends. Scarlet then faces Kevin and begins shooting explosives at him from her suit. Kevin battles Scarlet, just as the other minions turn up in the city and go after him. During the fight, Kevin falls to the ground and the entire minions arrive at the scene to begin cheering him. Scarlet sees this and fires hot lava at them, causing a massive hole in the ground that almost swallows the minions. She proceeds to shoot at them again, but Kevin appears behind her and flings her across the numerous buildings in the city. Bob and Stuart run to the other minions, and they all greet one another. Kevin joins them and is excited to see them. Scarlet later picks herself up and tries to eradicate Kevin and the minions once and for all by firing a massive missile, but Kevin swallows it. Scarlet and Herb attempt to escape with her rocket dress, only for Kevin to hold onto it and get pulled into the sky. The missile explodes, seemingly killing Kevin, Scarlet, and Herb. As the minions mourn the loss of their leader, Kevin appears at his normal size, using his clothes as a parachute as the tries to alight. The minions see him and become excited as they cheer him, running around the streets to catch him when he falls. The queen gets her throne and crown back and rewards Bob with a tiny crown for his teddy bear Tim, Stuart with an electric guitar, and Kevin with a knighthood. Scarlet and Herb, still alive, steal the crown again, only to be stopped by a young Gru, who fires a freeze ray at them and flees with the crown on a rocket-powered motorbike. The minions, deciding Gru is the new master they were looking for, begin to follow him. This is where the movie ends. Thanks for watching. See you soon with a new movie recap. Till then, stay happy and chill out.